By definition, drag is an act of exaggerated gender expression, usually in the hopes of providing some form of entertainment. But for the queens at Bloom OTR, drag is so much more. Drag has definitely allowed me to be more expressive of myself. Something about the glitz and the glamour and the jewels and everything, it just really, something drew me to that. And whenever I'm in drag, I feel like I can, I have a lot more confidence. Um, I feel like I'm able to really express myself and just be able to let loose and have fun again. A common theme among many performers is the idea that drag helps save them because through drag, they were able to connect with their true selves. I seen TV shows back in the day, like Jerry Springer and things like that. And I was like, ooh, what the frick is that? And I was like, ooh, no way, I don't want to do that. That's disgusting. I don't want to dress like a woman. Um, so then I did it. And I was like, holy crap. This is exactly what makes sense. This is what I'm supposed to be. And that's how I kind of discovered that possibly what I felt is that I might be trans. So drag just came kind of outlet to help discover like what I really am and who I really am. And whether they are a seasoned queen or someone new to the scene, they all agree that queer spaces allow them to grow into themselves. And the importance of these spaces has never been more obvious. I was definitely exploring places for myself um, to explore my sexuality and whatnot. And a lot of my like questions that I was answering for myself were just about going out and meeting people like me and I don't know, just having the best times and the best memories. The amount of support from the very beginning was unreal. I could not believe the amount of support Cincinnati that was given to me. I don't know if I can survive without the support that I have. I wouldn't be who I am today. Queer spaces have offered countless individuals a chance to grow and develop a sense of community. That's why we chose the name Bloom, because it's a process of becoming. You, you know, you germinate, you flourish, but everyone, you know, will come into themselves eventually. So it's just, it's important for me to be able to bring in all different um, walks of life to this space. But now these spaces and the community they were created for are once again under attack. The American Civil Liberties Union says that in 2023 alone, more than 450 anti-queer laws have been proposed. The ACLU and other groups, such as the Human Rights Campaign, says that this is the worst year in US history for legislation targeting the queer community. And now, drag performers have been pushed to the front of these fights. Drag queens are under attack, trans people, trans people are under attack. I'm super scared for the gay, the queer generations that are coming because we have fought for our rights and for our freedom and acceptance and things like that. So I'm afraid that like if the world turns against us, which it looks like right now. And so it's scary like what could be coming because I think our enemies are very vibrantly there. If there's a gay bar in your city or a gay bar in your area, Please go support that. Do not let us lose our spaces because when the world's after us, these gay bars, these queer bars are going to be where we can go to kind of be ourselves and be free without feeling like we're under attack and things like that. We need our safe spaces. I don't know like what my future would be like without these spaces. I don't know what my life would be like without performing. And if drag got banned from Ohio, I would be lost. Diamond says the political climate when she first started her drag career did not allow her and others like her to be as open and as free as they are now. But with these new proposals popping up weekly, she says she's afraid the queer community will have to go back into hiding. This is something many from the generation that followed haven't had to experience yet. And now, newer performers fear what's coming next. Um, when I first um, heard about everything, it was kind of, I would say, a shock to me because I wasn't alive for or aware when I was younger of all the situations going on before. So when it actually got going again, it was kind of a shock to me. Um, I actually quit like my full-time job to do drag. And so not only was it financially kind of an attack on me and others as well, but even um, just kind of personally, it was like, this is taking away something that helps me express myself and helps me like, to have fun with everyone and be a part of my community and um, have fun with them as well. Um, as just gay people in general, I feel like we just want to be ourselves and have fun being ourselves. And that's one thing that I feel like 
is always kind of been under attack, but more now than ever. A sense of community has been the driving force for those at Bloom. Despite their rising sentiments, they want to be there for each other and let people who feel different from others know that they have a place in this world. I feel like our local LGBTQIA plus spaces are the most important things for us. Um, they're not just nightclubs and bars. They're places where we gather, where we feel safe, where we find our chosen family. And it's the place where we can truly be ourselves and feel like we're not going to be judged or ridiculed for just wanting to have fun and just live our lives. Because if we lose these spaces, where else can we go to really be ourselves at our our spaces, you know? When Taylor talks about a chosen family, it's something many others in the queer community can relate to. Those who were kicked out of their homes and turned away from their families for being gay had to find people like them to find acceptance. Spaces like Bloom offer that and can be life-changing for those who spent their entire lives feeling ashamed for something they could not control. When we say chosen family, it's not just, oh, we're best friends and we just like to hang out together. No, we are family. You know, it's full of love and it's full of acceptance. And our shows and these things that we put on, like brunches and whatnot, that's what they're about. They're about letting loose and forgetting about the troubles of our everyday lives and coming together and just having fun. I feel like legis legislators and state representatives, um, they really should come out and see our shows. They should come out and see what our community is actually really like in a real setting and not just what they hear about because it's one of the most beautiful things out there is our chosen families and our community when we come together for something as um, simple and regular for us as a drag show. Taylor and the other queens say that there is a lot of misrepresentation of what a drag show is and that to say it is inappropriate for children including the very same queer youth who could find acceptance through these safe spaces, only further shrouds the queer community in negative and untrue stigma. To classify it as something like adult entertainment, when I'm sorry, I might be showing leg, but the amount of tights that I have on, this is not my real leg. Like, you go to a drag show, like we had a brunch this past week, and we had this adorable little kid, and we did Baby Shark you know, they try to incite that fear of, oh, these gay people and these trans people and these drag queens and whatnot, they're going to do something to the children. Where is the evidence of it? There's no evidence of it. Taylor says that these insinuations are extremely harmful to the queer community and doesn't understand why their existence creates so many problems. What are we doing that's hurting people? The growing amount of anti-queer legislation has opened the door for more violence and threats against the queer community. A survey by the Williams Institute found that by the end of 2022, LGBTQ plus people were nine times more likely to be the victims of violent hate crimes. The researchers behind the survey say, in part, that, quote, the rise of extreme anti-LGBTQ rhetoric and behaviors may embolden individuals to carry out crimes against LGBTQ people. Meanwhile, the Gay and Lesbian Alliance Against Defamation says attacks on drag shows took place in 47 out of 50 states last year. GLAD also says data shows this pattern of violence against drag performers is only getting worse in 2023. I'll get a call every now and then of just profanity <laughs> um, to the business, but it's not anything that I can stay afraid of. And we try our best definitely to keep out any hate and just to ignore the hate because this is where we can celebrate. These rising threats have created a political climate that makes queer people feel unsafe. And recent incidents like the Club Q shooting in Colorado have caused them to second guess their own safety, even when in their own safe spaces. Like a part of my monologue when I open shows, I have to literally say, just so everyone knows, Bloom OTR offers two exits. It is very important. Everyone here knows where exits are in case of emergency. So I'm talking and I'm saying this as I'm thinking about it in the room. And I'm literally telling the audience, and I felt the audience literally lose their breaths. They all kind of gasp like, <gasps> like this could happen. I think we all truly forget when we go places that this could happen. And we're a queer space. So the likelihood of it happening is pretty high nowadays. So to tell them like our exits and make sure I say that every time, you come to a drag show to kind of escape the world. Drag is an escape, it's a free, it's a safe space, it's a place to come to like, like let go and forget. I'm not afraid, like 
I think that, you know, the queer community will always rally around what needs to be done and we will fight and we will continue to be present. Um, it's just disheartening. I think that's what the main thing I'm trying to say is it's just disheartening to see backwards progress when in the past even five, six years, drag has just become more visible. Um, and I, you know, hearing the sentiments from our whole entire cast of queens, it's like they're, the, the rhetoric is almost judging them and categorizing them in the same level as like sex offenders and like criminals. Um, but again, it's just, it's just an art form. It's, um, yeah, it's just disheartening to see the misunderstanding of what drag really is. But despite these threats, the queer community continues to thrive. The show must go on and you, you never know. Um, but all you can do is hope and, and pray and, you know, advocate and support what you want to see represented. I can name probably like a hundred gay people, queer people that come see my shows on a weekly basis. And I could not imagine not doing this for them. Like I know I'm a big part of their um, mental health state of mind. I know I'm a big part of their, um, their coming out stories. So yeah, it's definitely not just for me, it's definitely for them as well. The performers at Bloom say it's important to continue to put on a show for those trying to find themselves especially for the younger generation of queer people who are starting to come to terms with themselves, looking for a place to grow amid all the hate. I do love when there's new people in the bar and I've actually had people come up to me too and tell me that they just turned 21 and they were able to actually go to these places and feel free instead of being out in the world where people would judge them more often. So it's really cool being able to like actually be kind of like a figure to them and be able to express my joy for like our community towards them as well. It's exciting. It's really, it's the most exciting to me. Um, my goddaughter is transgender and she is just the most alive I've ever seen her be. Um, in the past like few years since, you know, beginning her transition and I'm just excited for our future. Like I'm excited for her to have a space like this and be able to come here when she, you know, turns 21 and just be free, like have it be something normal. It excites me for future generations that, you know, they can have as open and positive experiences as I am now and that we are creating. Attacks on the queer community are nothing new. But despite the latest onslaught, they continue to be resilient. I don't know. I'm just really proud of, like, honestly, the our community for like sticking together. And like, I know there's still a lot of learning and a lot of things that we have to do to get to the point where this isn't happening anymore. Um, but yeah, I'm just really proud of our community and what we have with each other is really like powerful. Knowing that no matter what happens outside. The community can come together behind these doors and thrive is what keeps them going. The feeling that you get when you're standing there and everyone's singing along and everyone's partying and everyone is dancing to the music that you're doing. and when I, It's one of the best feelings in the entire world. It makes me feel really, really good that everyone's enjoying themselves um, and it makes me realize that this is where I'm meant to be and this is what I'm meant to be doing. Right now, there's a lot of controversy surrounding drag, but those who don't go to the shows may just view drag as a man dressing as a woman. But for an entire community, drag is so much more. Drag is a celebration. It's literally magic. It's the makeup, it's costume, it's, it's so much worth celebrating and worth, you know, investing in and keeping safe. I will fight for it, I will fight for I drag. I just hope that we don't go backwards. I think it's really beautiful, and I think that that should not be taken away, ever.